I tutored a lot, mainly math. Teachers gave me the students who had fallen behind, who were lost on the homeworks, and who lacked crucial concepts. So I tried to help them. At first, mainly by trial and error, keeping a tally in my head of which teaching methods work and which seemed to confuse my students further. Over time, my success rate grew because I got to understand my students better. Actually, I got to understand their brains better. Then, by the time I got to college, I got to learn about the science of teaching in an academic setting. In my neuro and cognitive science courses, I sifted through books and journal articles on how learning is actually underpinned by synaptic changes in the brain. Now, you might not usually think about this, but it's happening all the time. And it is crucial because learning is happening every day in our brains while you're sitting here listening to me and while students sit in classrooms across the world. People always ask me, Alexandra, are kids learning anything in schools these days? They're always learning, I like to answer. The real question is whether their brains are soaking in the information their teachers want them to be. So, back to the math. <laughs> From neuroscience, we know that numbers are stored in our parietal cortex, here shown in blue. In fact, we store numbers on our very own neuron number line. This means that we store numbers spatially in our brain, just like a number line does. This is largely due to the fact that where we store numbers and where we integrate spatial representations are largely overlapping in the brain. Now you might be thinking, why is she telling me this? Who cares? Well, we know from neuroscientists that if you teach to how the brain is organized, it actually improves learning. So with this in mind, Let's return to addition. Yes, way back to when you all first learned arithmetic. Here's a pretty simple one. Five plus four. Kids are often told five plus four is nine, but when you ask them why, they don't know what to say or how to explain it. So instead of having kids memorize addition as a bunch of facts, I urge you to teach them using a number line. You can say if you start at five, and jump four rungs forward, you're now at nine. This might not seem like a huge difference, but by explaining the process, kids can actually understand what arithmetic is. Where if they learn addition by just memorizing a bunch of facts, they can only learn one at a time. With the power of a number line, kids can perform this every day, by themselves, at home, or in a classroom. Now you might be thinking this is great and all for addition, but how does this relate to our daily lives? We're not in elementary school anymore. How can the science of learning improve my life? Well, first off, we need to create positive environments. By increasing dopamine, a hormone in the brain associated with reward, we can improve our focus and decision-making and memory. Just by creating a more positive environment, we can actually further students' logical reasoning. You might not think that emotion and cognition are interrelated, but scientists have proved this to be the case again and again. Second, we can create achievable challenges, just like video games do. We can create levels the same way that games do to push students forward, but keep the task doable given their ability level. This has been proven best for student motivation and for achievement. It's also arguably one of the reasons video games are so addictive. Third, we can use different modalities. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic. We can draw pictures. We can create activities that integrate all students. We can even add color and imagination. We can tell stories and have students tell their own. So, with these three principles in mind, I'd like to return to my days of tutoring. Physics was the class that often gave students the most trouble. So when we got to the section on lift, I started with the equations, because that's where my teacher had always started. But these, this just chunk of letters did not really seem to be helping my students. So instead, I moved on. I drew a picture of an airplane. We talked about how lift balances out weight and how that represents itself in a physical airplane. Then we drew graphs. We talked about altitude velocity, speed. These visuals were great and all, and they liked them, but they still didn't really get it. 
what were we talking about when we were talking about length? So that day, at the beginning of my tutoring session, the students and I actually experimented with paper airplanes. We, um, we had fun building them, and we actually ended up throwing them off of the second story balcony into our all-school dining hall. It was quite a learning experience for all students, not to mention teachers that day. <laughs> then, by the time we returned to the equations and the problem sets, my students had an understanding that was based in kinesthetic and visual memories. This is crucial, because all abstract concepts are more easily understood when they are based in students' own experiences. Whether you're trying to teach addition using a number line or the physics of airplane flight using paper airplanes, I urge you to explain the process. Now this might sound obvious, maybe you already knew this, but it's nice to know how neuroscience supports what good teachers already know. That the solution on its own is meaningless. That the process is where all learning occurs. In fact, the process is what creates these new connections between neurons in our brain. So, the next time you're standing in front of a classroom of students, or just trying to explain a concept to a friend, I urge you to teach to their brains. 